Hello and welcome to Trading 5 Talents. In today's video, I want to give an update on this tri-weekly iron condor strategy that I mentioned last week. So I'm going to be going through um, uh, some of the early tests that I've done this past week, um, some of the uh, corrections that I need to make uh, uh, to my statements from last week uh, regarding the setup of this strategy and then stick around to the end because I'm also going to be answering a few questions that I received about this particular iron condor strategy. So just to recap what I did with this strategy is I uh, originally am looking for an iron condor setup with a 70% chance of profit on both the short um, put vertical and the short call vertical. So combining those two verticals is the setup for an iron condor. So I was just looking on Robinhood for a 70% chance of profit. I was thinking this was approximately a 30 delta. However, after looking closely or more closely at it um, this past week, setting it up a few times, I realized that it's more of a 40 delta. Even though it says 70% chance of profit, if you actually look at the Greeks, it does say you know anywhere from 38 to 40 delta, so I'm just calling it a 40 delta. So what I was doing then is I was buying the options just one strike, so the long options, one strike further out of the money than what the short strikes were. So it was only a one strike width iron condor on both sides. I was entering for approximately 70 cents in credit, which would have been a $70 iron condor. And I was more concerned with getting the $70 credit rather than the actual um, deltas. And the reason is because it hinges, this strategy would hinge upon the risk reward ratio and the trade management. So with that $70 credit or that 70 cents credit, then there would be a 30 cent or $30 loss, max loss per iron condor. Just to make things a little bit easier and clearer and more simple, I am going to be calling it the 41 um, iron condor strategy rather than you know, the tri-weekly spy iron condor strategy. Um, and the reason is because I'm going to be testing a different type of strategy very similar to this, and they're both tri-weekly iron condor strategies. So I needed to differentiate the two. So I'm just going to be referring to it as the delta and then the width. So this is a 41 IC strategy. So this is what I need to update. So what I just mentioned before is a recap of how it's set up. Now I need to update this chance of profit that I was wrong uh, in my calculations before. And thank you to those who commented um, on the last video showing me that error. So I want to correct that here. So it is not a 70% chance of profit for this strategy. I was definitely wrong. I was just assuming 70% chance on the call side, 70% chance on the put side. Then um, in my... Uh, simplistic um, mathematical calculation, then of course it was a 70% chance of profit, but it's not. I was using the wrong delta, first of all, and I was also under the um, wrong assumption of how this chance of profit was uh, being calculated or how it works. The actual chance of profit is about 20% only. So it's a far cry from the 70% chance that I was assuming and I'm going to go through some of that calculation on, on how it works. So if we just have our uh, call vertical right here, so you can see the short call and the green um, label on the bottom. This is a 60% chance of profit if we're assuming a 40 delta. Now, a 40 delta, uh, if we're only going based on deltas, this would be a 60% chance of profit that the price of the underlying asset or the stock was below the short call. If you looked on Robinhood, this 40 delta is says it's approximately a 70% chance of profit. Okay, so we're just going to go based on deltas here. And I'm going to call it a 60% chance of profit that the price stays below the short strike. All right, that's on the call side. Now, this is an iron condor, so we also have a um, short put vertical. So with a short put vertical, you can see this is an iron condor. That means there's also a 60% chance of profit that the price is going to stay above the short put. All right, now... What I was falsely assuming was that the chance of profit was in the middle of these two short strikes, when actually it's not. Um, these chance of profits that I'm listing right here are only if it stays above the put, uh, the short put, all the way up until infinity, or if it stays below the short call all the way down to zero. So these both can't be true at the same time. They're mutually exclusive, except for that overlap in the middle, which is where we want the underlying um, stock price to be. 
So what is the actual chance of profit? Well, it's going to be 20%. And so how did I arrive at these calculations? Well, I'm going to show you that in this next slide. So here we have our iron condor at the bottom, and then we have a um, just a bell curve, a standard deviation curve uh, just above it. So we are looking at the distribution of all the prices that our... Um, that our underlying asset could be at. And of course, we are concerned with the underlying price right in the middle between our, or somewhere between our short put and our short call. So again, if this is a 60% chance of profit of the price being to the left of our short call or lower than our short call, then that means there's a 40% chance that it's gonna be on the right side of it or higher than our short call. All right, similarly, with our put, if there's a 60% chance that the price is going to be above or to the right of our short put, that means there's a 40% chance that it's going to be to the left of it or below it. So what we're concerned with with the iron condor is we want that um, price, the stock price or underlying price to be in between the short put and the short call. So above the short put and below the short call. So what does that mean? Well, if we take all of the potential prices, so 100% of the potential uh, price values, subtract the 40 in red and subtract the 40 in green, what we're left with is the 20% that's in the middle. Now, this graph isn't obviously to scale, uh, looks more like a third, a third, and a third, um, but really the percentages are uh, 40, percent red, 20% in the middle, 40% green. So really our chance of profit based on deltas alone is only a 20% chance of profit. So what does that mean? Is this 41 strategy still viable? Well, let's go over the advantages once again. First of all, it's a very low cost strategy. Really only $100 uh, is needed because this is just a one width um, strike. Uh, on, on either wing. So only $100 is needed. Uh, in actuality, though, it's really going to be like $200 because, at least for me, because I was entering the second iron condor before the first one closed. So I was actually needing $200 in order to do that. Um, the other advantage is that it's market neutral. And so there are a lot of nice option strategies that uh, do very well in a bull market. Obviously, we're not in a bull market, so you would need a strategy that works well in a bear market. Um, but you could also have a market neutral strategy in which it doesn't matter what type of market you're in. Um, a strategy like this could still work. Now, the disadvantages are starting to pile up. First of all, because there's only a 20% chance of profit, that means there's an 80% chance of loss. And so you're going to sustain a lot of losses while you um, run a strategy like this. You're also going to find that the reality doesn't equal the expectation. 20% loss, I'm sorry, 20% win, 80% loss. Um, we are assuming a uh, one to three risk rewards um, ratio. However, it doesn't always line up that way. And I'll show you the examples that I've been doing and uh, some of my testing this past week. Uh, another disadvantage is that there's a very narrow profit range, and I'll show you that also in uh, the charts in just a minute. Assignment risk, uh, if you're using the SPY, uh, that can be a very big disadvantage because that's gonna be uh, obviously just a lot of money. And then there's more commissions if you pay commissions um, because this is an iron condor, there's four legs, and you're gonna be doing that three times a week, so those commissions could really pile up. So let's take a look at some of the trades that I've done this past week. All right, here is a 15-minute candlestick chart of SPY this past week. Over on the left, you can see that big gap down. That was from Thursday to Friday of um, last week. Okay, so not this most recent Thursday to Friday, but the week previous Thursday to Friday. And so I entered my first iron condor right about uh, 10.30 in the morning of Friday, not yesterday, but again, the Friday previous. And you could see the short put strike was 366. The short call strike was 371. And you can see um, in this box when I entered and when it expires. So th the, the price had to stay between um, the 366 and the 371. That is, the price had to stay in this white box in order to receive that max profit. Now, again, we're trying to either make $60 or only lose $20. That's the risk to reward. Risk 20 to make 60, um, and that's the ideal situation. And as you can see, the price did not uh, stay uh, in between 
366 and 371. In fact, due to Robinhood's early sellout process, if there is a um, uh, option that is uh, threatening to be exercised or in the money and you don't have enough money in your account to cover that um, assignment cost, then it's going to sell that particular option. In this case, it was selling out my put vertical. So it sold my put vertical uh, at three o'clock, which is an hour before market close. And then you can see the price actually closed way below uh, my short strike. So yeah, that would have uh, been an in the money uh, put vertical. Um, but it, and I'll show you the prices that I entered, but it actually was a profitable trade for me, even though the price did not expire between my short options. All right. At this time as well, around 2.30, I entered uh, another iron condor for the following um, for the following expiration, which would have been a Wednesday expiration. So the first iron condor entered Friday, so it expired on Monday. Um, the second iron condor you see here, I entered Monday for expiration on Wednesday. And you can see the overlap between those two boxes. So I'm entering the second iron condor before I actually closed out the first one and therefore I still needed um, $100 in collateral for both of those. That's why I'm saying I needed $200. All right, so 361 to 367 is what I needed. Uh, the price to stay in, obviously you can see it did not do that. Um, I got uh, my call vertical sold out by Robin Hood automatically um, at that arrowhead, and then you can see the price closed way up there outside and way above my 367 short call. So this one was a loser, right? So my third one, I entered here, and 368 to 374 and this was entered on wednesday afternoon for friday expiration and then we just had a terrible next two days and you could see that i was um, actually stopped out here so this is when the iron condor hit 90 cents therefore i exited and so i took the full 20 dollar loss and then obviously you can see the closing price of friday which was yesterday uh, was way below uh, my 368 short put strike so you can notice in each of these, when I'm entering the iron condors, well, let me go to the last one, first of all. Um, so I entered here 359 to 363, and obviously that one's for next Monday, so um, we'll see what happens there. But you can see with each of these iron condors, when I'm entering, my strikes are pretty equidistant from where the current market is. Um, however, the market is just moving too wildly in order for me to um, make these iron condors or for these iron condors to become profitable. So you can see how narrow that profit range is. So in this case, there's only a four strike difference on my latest iron condor. So that's one of the disadvantages of uh, this strategy. So I took a lot of losses. It closed with outside my ranges, but again, with only a 20% success rate, uh, this is sort of expected. So let me show you the numbers for these actual trades. Okay, so I made this um, the simple data sheet here. Uh, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to record each of these entries of my iron condor. So these are the three that we just talked about. These are the dates. This is what SPY was at when I entered uh, my long and short um, option strikes. The entry price of each one. So you can see I'm staying around $70. This is the close of SPY. And these numbers will turn red if it closes outside of my short um, my short option range. So if, if they're non-profitable. So that's what these red numbers are. These are my exit prices. So you could see this first one, my put vertical closed automatically at 46 cents and then my call vertical expired worthless. So I exited at 46, I entered at 70. I got a $24 profit with that trade. Here my call vertical closed automatically at 82 cents but I paid 72 cents to get in. So a $10 loss. Here I was stopped out because it reached 90. So I took my full uh, $20 loss which because I entered at 71 cents, it was actually only a $19 loss. So those are graphed up here at the top, $24 in green, 10 and 19 in red. So the total profit and loss up here is $5. Three trades have been made. I've won, um, I mean, even though that was a loser because I actually made profit, I won one out of three, so 33%. However, here are my expected win rates and my expected profit and loss. So my expected win, win rate is only 20%. My expected profit and loss by winning uh, one of these trades, it should have been $20, but it wasn't. I'm um, actually negative five. And the reason is because that one win of $24 
wasn't the full win, which I expected to be 60. Because remember, if I win one of these, it's $60. If I lose one, it's only 20. So if I won one technically for $60, lost two more, so minus 40, I should have had $20 uh, in profit. But that's not the case because I'm not getting the max win on my winners. So once again, is this a viable strategy? Well, as of right now, it doesn't look like it because I'm only getting a 20% win rate. And if I look at all the probabilities, I sort of mentioned it last week, but let me show you another um, table that I made. So if you look right here, um, these are the win percentages in this first column, uh, just incremented by 5%, so zero to 100%. If I win $60 or lose $20, this is what it looks like. So again, at 25%, this is our break even, this is what we mentioned um, previously if I were to actually win 60. So I was initially thinking that our chance of profit was in the 70 range. Obviously, that would be nice. Um, but even if I was using 30 deltas, so 100 minus 30 minus 30 is 40% win rate. That would have been great. However, I'm noticing that my deltas are actually 35, or I'm sorry, my deltas are actually 40 deltas. That means 100 minus 40 minus 40 is a 20% win rate, which would be right here. So we're just below the, um, the break even in terms of probabilities. So I'm still going to test it for just a full 10 trades, 10 iron condors, um, just to see if, if it's viable. But if I'm not going to get $60 in max profit, then I'm definitely not going to say that this is a viable strategy. If my win rate is below, indeed below my break even win rate, um, then definitely not. This is not a viable strategy. So that uh, leads me to a few questions um, that have come up. Okay, so the first question is, what about SPY assignment? Um, I don't have enough money to buy 100 shares of SPY if, you know, if that's the case or sell 100 shares of SPY, which I don't have. Um, so you are covered by your longs, but if those expire out of the money and your shorts expire in the money, then that could cause some issues. So thankfully with Robinhood, they have that early closeout process at 3 p.m., and if you don't have enough money in your account or enough purchasing power, then it's going to um, close out that uh, that risk. So that prevents early assignment, but it also locks in a profit or locks in the gains at that price, which you saw in my um, first and second um, iron condors of the week. But if you don't have um, this uh, protection against uh, early assignment, then yes, that is definitely something you need to consider because that could be a very catastrophic event uh, in options. Second question is why not use SPX? Now, this is a really good question. So first of all, SPY is an ETF that's traded on Robinhood, has expirations every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and um, you purchase shares on it. It's got a dividend, and it's just a really liquid instrument. Now, SPX is very similar, except SPX is um, is cash settled. So that means that there's going to be no assignment. Okay, You're just either going to lose the cash or you're going to gain the cash um, if these options expire um, in or out of the money. Now, there is no dividend on SPX. Uh, and also, and also um, these expirations are every weekday. So they have expirations on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So you can trade zero DTE options on SPX, something that you can't do on SPY. Now, the strikes are um, wider, so they're $5 strikes versus uh, SPY's $1 strike. But Robinhood does not um, allow SPX trading, so they're cash settled. You can't actually buy shares of SPX, and because of the zero DTE, I believe that's why Robinhood doesn't allow it. So that would be a very, very good alternative to run a strategy like this on a zero DTE um, cash settled. So there's no risk of early assignment. You're just going to need a lot more capital and you're going to need a different broker. So one broker that um, I have had uh, used in the past that allows SPX trading. And I'm, I know there's a lot, I'm sure, but um, Thinkorswim, TD Ameritrade's Thinkorswim allows it. So this would be uh, something that you might want to test a strategy like this Iron Condor strategy on. So I'll have some more information about that uh, probably coming up later. So that's the answer to that question. Why not use SPX? 
Um, I could uh, if I if I changed, but it's going to require more money um, if I did that. But uh, other than that, there's there's probably not a reason to not use SPX because it's a really good alternative and it's got a lot of advantages over SPY. Next question, can you exit these options or these iron condors early? Yes, you can exit them early. And sometimes, as you saw, I was forced to exit them early. But I'm trying to keep my stop loss, the, the SL, and my um, take profit prices um, at the $60 or $20 stop loss and then a $60 take profit because that's really the basis for this iron condor strategy is the risk to reward. So if I'm taking my profits early, um, then it's not really going to um, benefit me because yes, I'm getting these little wins, but I am more likely going to sustain a lot of losses in the meantime. So I really don't want to exit um, too early if I don't have to. And if I'm continually being uh, forced to exit because of this early closeout process by Robinhood, then this is probably not going to work on Robinhood. Therefore, something like SPX might be a better alternative. Also, should I widen out the strikes, both just on the wing side, like each wing widen them out, and then also widen out the short strikes in the middle to increase that, that profit? Uh, that profit range. So these uh, are good ideas and they require a lot more capital, however. So right now with a $1 wide strike, it only costs um, $100 or $100 in collateral. If I widen out the wings, then for every strike I widen it, that's another $100 in collateral I'm going to need. So yes, I could, um, but it just requires more money. Now, what about widening out the short strikes to increase the profit range? So as those center strikes, those short strikes widen out, my chance of profit increases, but my premiums are going to decrease. And it's because the markets are so efficient, especially something with as liquid as SPY, it's probably going to be um, about the exact same as if I kept that really narrow range of those short strikes. So that's what I mentioned here. It's going to lower those premiums, the profit, but it increases the chance of profit. So it's going to be very similar. But with all that said, this is a good idea, both of these, widening out the wings, widening out the uh, short strikes in the middle. And I am currently um, looking at a similar strategy to this 41 strategy, um, but I'm going to do both of those things and see if we still can't find something that is going to work on SPY or QQQ for that matter, um, on Robinhood, it hopefully will avoid the early closeout process. Um, secondly, it's going to uh, be better for our trading psychology. Um, instead of just losing 80 times and winning 20, it's going to be better for that. And then also it's going to take some of these uh, it's going to take this into consideration about widening out the strike. So uh, probably next week is when I will talk about that. I'm going to test it out this week so I can show you some numbers on how that works. But in the meantime, I'm going to continue to test this 41 IC strategy uh, for 10 trades. So I've already done and completed three. My fourth one is put on for next Monday, and then I'll finish it out. And then I'll give a summary at the end of those 10 iron condors to let you know what the final numbers were. So you want to make sure that you subscribe and that you also uh, turn on the notifications so you can see when that video comes out. And also be sure to turn, tune in um, in the next video, which again is probably next week when I'm going to introduce a variant of this 41 strategy that I think, as of right now, I think it's going to be better um, now knowing what uh, what re the reality is of this iron condor strategy versus what was just on paper before. So if you have any more questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section below or catch me on Twitter at Trading5Talents. Be sure to subscribe so you can get um, updates of when these new Iron Condor strategies are coming out. And also, if you just want to learn more about options trading, um, again, I primarily focus on the wheel strategy, but I'm also just testing out um, newer strategies that sell options premium, then go ahead and follow along. We'd love to have you join uh, the YouTube family. And uh, until next time, trade wisely and take care.